Welcome to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast with your host, Coach Kramer. This is episode 50. How your smart mind can use gratitude practice against you and how to get the benefits of being grateful in a way that works with your mind. Hi there, smart human. You may have heard this before. Gratitude practice is good for your mental health and well-being. According to studies, grateful people are happier. They report better health and well-being. They sleep better. They have better relationships. Gratitude practice dispels stress hormones. Gratitude practice makes people more resilient. Amazing. I almost feel very jealous of grateful people. So maybe this makes you want to get out your journal and start listing everything you're grateful for, right? At the end of the day. Except something may feel a bit off about this whole exercise. And there is. Because a lot of smart humans force themselves to be grateful. And that that is not good for your health. And this usually happens when they have feelings which they think they should not be having. They think, I'm so bored by my well-paying, high-flying corporate job, but I should be grateful. I feel completely trapped in my beautiful home in suburbia, but I should be grateful. I want to scream if they make me attend another meeting at our state-of-the-art office, but I should be so bloody grateful. Look at everything I have. I have so much privilege, maybe so many advantages, so many things other people do not have. I should be grateful grateful instead of bored, trapped, upset. And you can see how this is not going to contribute to better sleep, well-being, all the things, right? And there's another aspect about gratitude practice. Gratitude can, for some people, carry the connotation of being passive. As in, you aren't an empowered actor or agent. This thing Thing happened to you for or for you and you should be grateful. It runs the risk of erasing your agency, your personal contribution to whatever it is you created. And add to that, for some people, including me, it is also reminiscent of being saved, air quotes. I remember all those adults that tried to quote unquote rescue me by trying to make me normal, (laughs) when I was struggling, you know, a depressed teenager or young adult, and who then (laughs) expected me to be very grateful for their attempt to make me normal. Now, if in your mind using the word gratitude doesn't disempower you at all, great, carry on your gratitude practice if it's working for you. But if it isn't, or you just want to try something else, I suggest appreciation. To me, to appreciate something is to honor that it is in my life, to give thanks for it if I feel so inclined, to shine a light on it so I can enjoy it even more. I use appreciation to feel cared for, to feel inspired, to feel abundant, to feel lit up, to feel blessed, right? Many other beautiful things. And you can do the same. You can appreciate people, places, things, events, small moments, interactions, but also, for example, your own capacities and gifts. I appreciate my capacity for joy. I really appreciate that my partner can make the most amazing sourdough bread and does so at least three times a week. I appreciate and love my gorgeous office that gives me room to play, think big, create all the things and to be alone. (laughs) I appreciate the amazing Japan trip I went on in 2019. I deeply appreciate and love my amazing smart clients. I appreciate the money in my bank account and I hope the money appreciates too. 
I appreciate the way my fountain pen feels when I write. I appreciate that my 12-year-old fridge in my office is still working. I appreciate the great food on my table, including the amazing cheeses I get to enjoy every week. Shout out to the Kaashoeve in Rotterdam. I appreciate all of it so much. And I really, really appreciate my smart mind. And in addition to shining a light on the good things in your life and create all of those happy hormones, all the things in your body, appreciation is a great tool if you want to change the way you think about something or someone. Again, we're not trying to go from black to white here, but we're trying to find the nuanced middle. So let's say your neighbor Alex drives you a bit mad with a leaf blower. So mad, in fact, that when you see him, All you can think of is their leaf blower and how much you hate it and how bloody inconsiderate they are. You can't even begin to access all the times they accepted parcels for you, rescued, looked out kids with the spare key and all the other positive things they did. So if you want to stop being furious and mad and annoyed and (laughs) losing a lot of energy every time you hear it, a leaf blower, you could try this. You could write down, I appreciate my neighbor Alex for, and make a list. And this is not to condone their leaf blowing addiction, right? This is for you. This is for your mental health and well-being. You can try the same thing with your partner if you notice they're starting to annoy you a little bit. With your colleagues, with your job, the house or area you live in. For example, I live on a very busy thoroughfare and in all honesty, I hate it. Add to that a leaky roof and I think I have plenty of reasons not to be happy about my house. Yet I live in a massive three-floor apartment with beautiful oak wood floors, a small terrace with a stunning view of Rotterdam and a very well-equipped kitchen. So now what? I could tell myself to shut up and be grateful. Only that doesn't work at all. I still hear the cars day and night. So I just allow myself to dislike those and appreciate the good stuff. Hate the cars, appreciate the kitchen. Don't love the leaky roof, but I adore the view. Would love to live closer to the sea, but I thoroughly enjoy having a bathtub. Can you see how this is much more effective than me forcing myself to be grateful for my house? Also, note that what I'm doing here is getting super specific. Again, we don't usually like everything about something or even somebody. (laughs) Just at a subconscious level, we think we should. So we can easily sort everything into neat boxes. And if this is new to you, you want to check out the episodes on black and white thinking. It's episode 12 and 13. So appreciation at a granular level helps me move to that messy middle where I get to love and hate, be frustrated by and enjoy what can boil down to the same thing. In this case, my house. So I want you to give this a try. Write down 10 things you appreciate about the place you live, your job, someone you love, yourself, your life, and last but not least, your beautiful, smart mind. Notice how this instantly shifts you into a much more spacious way of being without having to feel grateful. And thank you as always, for listening to this podcast. I so appreciate you. (laughs) I appreciate every single one of you in, as we're recording this, 89 countries around the world. And as we near our 52nd anniversary episode, right, it's almost been a year, I have a favor to ask. I would love for you, if you enjoy the podcast, to leave a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify to make it easier for more smart humans to find the podcast. I really 
appreciate you taking the time. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.